when you look back in the past, things seem so easy in the hindsight, correct? Such is the case with some string-based problems. Sometimes, you have to look from the reverse direction in order to get to an efficient solution. I am talking about the problem partition labels on lead code. Trust me, this is a really fun problem to solve. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will look at the most naive way to approach this problem and what difficulties you may face when doing so. Going forward, we will try to optimize this solution and then also do a dry run of the code so that all of this sticks in your mind forever. That way you will never forget about it. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given a string and you have to partition it. How many partitions do you have to make? You have to make the maximum number of partitions possible such that each character can only appear in only one part. So what does that actually mean? Let us look at the test case that we are given. So this is the string that we are provided with and we have to partition it into certain number of parts. The condition is that if a character occurs in one partition, it cannot occur in the other partition. So let's say I make a partition like this. This is my first partition and let us say this is my second partition. So you can see that any of the character that is appearing in this first partition, you cannot find it in the second partition, right? So based on this, you have to find the maximum number of partitions that you can make. For this particular test case, the maximum number of partitions that you can make is three. And these are those three partitions. If you look closely, the first partition starts at A and ends at A. The next partition starts at D and ends at E. And the third partition starts at H and goes all the way up to end. Right? Notice that all of these partitions have distinct characters. If a character appears in the first partition, you won't find it in any of the other partitions. Right? Similarly, let us look at another test case. This is the test case number two. And in this test case, you can only find one partition. And that is the entire string. Notice that there is no other way that you can partition this string such that each of the partitions have distinct characters. But just for an example, let us say this string had one more character x. Then you could have made one more partition and that would be x. And then you would have two partitions, right? Now, if you have understood this problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let me show you how you can go about solving it. Let's take up our sample test case and try to solve the problem. You are given this string, right? And what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the first approach? You can say that if I'm starting with a character A, then this character has to be present in my partition, right? So one way you can go about solving this problem is you can start with the first character A and then look in the string what is the last occurrence of A that you can find. This is the last occurrence, right? So this will be the minimum length of your first partition, right? But you also have to make sure that all the characters in this partition do not occur in the rest of the string. Otherwise, this won't be the definite partition, right? So what you're going to do is you will start with the next character B and check if you can find B anywhere else in the string. You cannot, right? So that means B is contained in your partition and you're good to go. Then you see A again, you have already covered A, you see B again, B is already covered. Now you see a new character and that is C. What you will do is you will check if you can find C anywhere out of this partition. You cannot, right? So that is good and C will be a part of this partition. You have already checked B, you have already checked A, you have checked C and then you have checked A. Cool, you found one partition. Similarly, you can move ahead. Next time you start with the character D. And then you will try to find out up till where you can find D in the string. This is the last occurrence of D, right? So this is the minimum length of second partition. Once again, what you will do is you will check if all the internal characters appear nowhere in the string. What is the next character? The next character is E. So you check if you can find E in the remaining part of the string. You find a E over here, right? 
and this is out of the partition. So what you'll have to do is you will have to extend your partition. Now your partition includes E as well. So cool. Now move ahead. Look for the next character F. Can you find it in the rest of the string? No, right? So F is good. Next, you see an E again. We have already covered E, so skip it. Next, see the character G. Can you find G in the rest of the string? No, right? So G is good. Next, you see D. We have already covered D. And next, you see an E. We have already covered E. So this is how we made our second partition. You still have a part of string remaining, right? So let us make more partitions. You start with the character H and then you will find its last occurrence. This is the last occurrence of H. So this is the size of smallest third partition you can make. Now approach the problem in a similar way. You see the letter I and see if I occurs in the rest of the string. You find it over here, right? That means the length of this partition should extend. So what I will do is I will extend my partition to include the letter I over here, right? Now you see I have covered I. Go on to the next character and that is J. Do you find a J elsewhere? Yes. And so what you are going to do is you will include this J as well in your partition. Now you see you have covered the entire string and hence you found out all your three partitions. So you can safely say that this string can be split into a maximum of three partitions and that is the maximum partitions possible. Now this approach works and it will give you a correct answer every time. But the major problem is that you are comparing each of the character in the entire string every time. When you got into your next partition, you were looking for E. When you go into your third partition, you were looking for I. So you are making a lot of comparisons and this will slow down your code. So can we think of a faster way to solve it? Let's see what we can do. Whenever you try to optimize a solution, just try to think what is the most time taking step of a solution that you have already thought. In our last solution, the most time that we were taking is to find the last index of a particular character, right? If you had an A, you were iterating through the string to find the last occurrence of A. If you had an I, then you were iterating through the string to find the last occurrence of I, correct? So what if we can speed up this process? I have the same sample string in front of me, but this time I have also written down all the indexes of all the characters. So what are we going to do with these indexes? We can store the last index of each character separately, right? So I have this table in front of me where I will be storing all the last indexes. So in this table, I will store the last occurrence of A, the last occurrence of E, the last occurrence of J. You get the idea, right? To get the last occurrence, what do you do? You have to look at the string from the reverse direction, right? And that is when you can know, okay, this is the last time I get a certain character. So we'll start doing that. Just start to look from the reverse direction and see, you get the character J, right? And this is at index 23. That means at index 23, you have the last occurrence of J. So in my table, what I'm going to simply do is I will write down 23 in front of J. Now move on to the next character. I see the letter I. That means the last occurrence of I happens at the 22nd index. So at I, I will write down 22. Now look at L. We have 21. So I write down 21. Next, I get a K and that is 20. So I write down 20 in front of K. Next, we have H. So write down 19. Next, I get the character J. And look in the table. We already have a value for J, right? That means this is not the last occurrence. So what you can do is you can just skip it since this value is already filled up, right? So similarly, I will move on to my next character and I see an I. I is also occupied. So move ahead. This way you will iterate through this entire string in the reverse direction and fill up all of these positions. I'm leaving this out as an exercise for you. I'll just fill it up really quick. Okay, so I have my table ready with me and this table is telling me the last occurrence of each character. For example, after 8, I won't find any A. And after 11, I won't find any F in the string. Correct? So let us try making our partitions once again. I start with the first character A. Now look up in the table. What is the last occurrence of A? That is 8, right? So you know that this will be my first partition or the minimum partition that I have to consider. 
Now move on to the next character. You have the character B. Look up in the table. What is the last occurrence of B? It is 5. And 5 is smaller than 8, right? That means we are including all the occurrences of 5 in our partition, right? Next, we have A that is already covered. B is already covered. Next, we get the character C. Look for the last occurrence of C in the table. That is 7. Once again, 7 is less than 8. So, we are good over here. B is covered again, A is covered, C is covered, and then A is covered again. So, you have reached the last index now. That means you made one partition. Now, start your next partition. You get the character D. And check the last occurrence of D. That is at 14, right? So, what you are going to do is, you will make this partition up till here. Now, start moving ahead. You get the character E. Check for the value of E in the table. The last occurrence of E is 15. And 15 is greater than 14, right? So, what I am going to do is, I will just update my partition up to the length of 15. You get the idea, right? Now, look at the next character. That is F. The last occurrence of F is 11. And that is less than 15. So, you are good. We have covered E. Now, we get a character G. Look at the last occurrence of G. That is 13. Once again, less than 15. So, you are good. You have covered D and then you have covered E. Once again, you reach the last index. And hence, this partition is also complete. You can start your next partition now. You start with the letter H and then you will look at the last index of H. That is 19. So, you can cover up till here. Moving ahead, we have the letter I. And look for its last index. That is 22, right? And 22 is greater than 19. So, what I am going to do is, I will mark 22 as my last index and I will cover all of these elements in my partition. So, similarly, I can move ahead and I see the letter J. Check the last occurrence of J. That is 23. And 23 is greater than 22, right? So, once again, what you are going to simply do is, you will update the last index of this partition. You have now reached the end of the string, right? And you see, we have found all the three partitions. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of this works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and the test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. Check the link in the description below. So, what I do next is, I create a variable partitions that will store all of my results. Next, what I do is, I start a for loop that will iterate through each character in my string. And then, what I will do is, I will get the first index of the first character. So, I get the starting index of A as 0. And then, I will try to get the end index of the same character. So, I will get the end index of A as 2, right? So, you got the minimum partition that will contain A, right? So, now the fun begins you will start another loop to look at each element in the partition, right? So, you look at B and then you will try to get the last index of B. What is the last index of B? The last index of B is 3, right? And that is greater than 2. So, we compare these two indexes and since the last index of B is greater than 2, I will update my last index to the last index of B. So, now, I am going to update my end index to 3. That means I am looking at this partition now. Correct? So, what we are going to do is, this loop will run again and we will check for A, that is covered. Next, we will check for B and that is also covered. So, this partition completes. Moving on, I will get at my next character and that is X. You won't find X anywhere else in the string. So, that is the only single partition. So, this process will go on and I will get my third partition as DED and then the last partition of a single character and that is G. Once all of this is completed, you simply return your partitions. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, that is because we iterate through the string only once, and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1, that is because we do not take any extra space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, just take a moment and look back at the approach we took. Just let that sink in for a while. I know that when we approach string-based problems, we start from the beginning, right? We attack from the beginning and then go on solving the problem as and when it requires, correct? But sometimes, to find an optimal solution, 
try to look at the string from the reverse direction, especially when you are concerned about the last indexes of characters. It could be possible that you find an optimal solution or an even better solution. What other problems did you see where you had to approach the string from a reverse direction? Can you think of a better solution now? Did you find any problems with the solution I just offered you? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. I am including a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming concepts for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next, or rather, what do you want to learn next. I'll be glad to help you out. Until then, see ya!